hosted the 1932 Winter Olympics. Don't look it up on Wikipedia, you'll ruin the surprise. But here's a hint, it wasn't Duluth, Minnesota. Welcome to Minnesota Historia. I'm Haley, your guide to the history of Duluth's doomed Winter Olympics. Oh, hello there. On January 10th, 1929, the Duluth Herald reported city leaders in Duluth were making a bid for the 1932 Olympics. And why not? Duluth has snow, it has ice, it has some hills, especially when compared to other cities in the state. But, and I am just playing devil's advocate here, are those hills big enough? If you average the elevations of our peaks and valleys, we're actually the fifth flattest state in the country. We're flatter than Kansas. Let that sink in for a second. Flatter than Kansas. On the other hand, those early Olympics were much smaller affairs. In 1932, only 251 athletes from 17 countries competed in seven sports, plus a couple of demonstration sports, which were just sports they did for fun. They give you a faker, smaller medal. And in 1930, Duluth was the 90th largest city in the entire country. So does that mean that this is doable? Maybe. Let's take a closer look at the sports. You've got your figure skating, your speed skating, and your bobsled, your ice hockey, your cross country skiing, your ski jumping, and your Nordic combined, which is just cross country skiing plus ski jumping. Yeah, I know, it's weird. But that's literally it. Only a couple of these sports require any sort of real elevation. But what about the demonstration sports? In 1932, you've got curling and dog sled racing. Yeah, I know, curling and dog sled racing. Those are right up Duluth's alley. Maybe Duluth can pull this off? So in 1929, the city leaders of Duluth decided, sure, what the hey, let's throw our mucklucks into the ring. Put together one of these bids then there. Tell those nice Olympic folks over there in Switzerland that Duluth's got a couple of not too bad things going for itself right here. But still, it seems like such a long shot. Maybe I'm being too hard on Duluth's chances. To gain some perspective, I visited the Duluth Curling Club. They were hosting a party for Duluth's homegrown Olympic superstars, the U.S. curling team. I wanted to know if Duluth could host this thing today. Should Duluth host the Winter Olympics? Absolutely yes. Really? Oof. That ain't a dumb question. I think that's legit. We obviously have a world-class curling club. Long track's got to be out on the big lake. We have enough hockey rinks. It would be wonderful, but I don't think so. <laughs> Yeah, we probably don't have the money to do that. I don't know if we have the infrastructure. I'd like to say yes, but I think the uh, the scale of it these days is pretty insane. So it might be a little difficult, but it would be really awesome to have it in my hometown. Duluth would be an amazing host for the Winter Olympics. I, uh, I mean, it'd be a little bit tricky with some of the uh, skiing events. The Winter Olympics today are a far cry from what happened in 1932. We need a time machine would be great, yes. I would like a time machine myself. Well, there you have it. That settled absolutely nothing. Maybe we should visit some of the venues the city leaders of Duluth were planning to use. This is where the Olympic curling event would have been held. No, not here in the parking lot. We take our curling seriously here. This is the original location of the Duluth Curling Club. Built in 1913, it was the largest curling facility on earth. And why wouldn't it be? Then and now, Duluth has always been the curling capital of America. On its lower level, the original Duluth Curling Club boasted 12 sheets of ice and seating for 8,000 spectators. The second level had a ring for ice skating and hockey. But that wasn't the only ice in town. Due to the growing popularity of hockey, the amphitheater opened across the street in 1924. It offered seating for more than 4,000 hockey fans. And today, it's a grocery store. There's a museum quality historical display in their entryway, above the motorized grocery carts. And you can still see a portion of the old amphitheater building along London Road. It's right here, underneath the cold cuts and potato salad. The University of Minnesota Duluth's first ever hockey team played here. They were nicknamed the Pedagogues. It's a word that means teachers, and not whatever you were thinking. As for ski jumping, Duluth had Chester Bowl, a park established in 1888. By 1908, the Duluth Ski Club was already hosting the National Ski Jumping Championships. 
They hosted again in 1915, and 12,000 people filled grandstands and bleachers built for the occasion. That original ski jump flew down in 1916, but don't worry, Big Chester was built in 1924, with plenty of time for the Olympic bid. In the northern half of Minnesota, only two ski jumping facilities remain. One is here, in Cloquet, and the other is on the Iron Range, in Coleraine. This is one of the ski jumps still standing in Cloquet. Duluth tore down the last of their ski jumps at Chester Bowl in 2014. And yeah, a lot of people are still bitter about it. Why can't we have nice ski jump things? But let's get back to the events. The John Bear Grace Sled Dog Race, which usually starts in Duluth, is considered the best sled dog event in the lower 48. And you can't throw a snowball in Duluth without hitting a cross-country ski trail. As for a bobsled run, Duluth didn't have one of those. But the city didn't have Spirit Mountain either. That wouldn't open until 1974. So there's a place to put the bobsled track, maybe. Incredibly, it seems like Duluth does have enough venues to host this thing. But what about hotels? A common complaint in the early 1920s was that all of Duluth's biggest hotels were aging and located in a less desirable part of town. Its smaller hotels were more like boarding rooms, and Canal Park had industry on its mind more than tourists. Then, in 1925, came the Hotel Duluth. Opulent, 14 stories tall, it boasted 450 rooms. That would have been on the city leaders' minds as they promised the International Olympic Committee enough rooms to accommodate 20,000 visitors. Speaking of visitors, in 1929, the Hotel Duluth briefly became famous thanks to an unusual guest, a 400-pound bear who was just traveling through town. He liked the smell of what the Hotel Duluth was cooking. He smashed a plate glass window and ransacked the coffee shop. So they shot him made all the papers. He was stuffed and displayed in their brand new Black Bear Lounge. That is not how the Hotel Duluth planned to treat its Olympic guests. So it seems like Duluth had everything in place to make a bid. There was only one thing standing in their way. So were a lot of other cities, including Montreal, Oslo, Denver, Minneapolis, Lake Tahoe, and Yosemite National Park. On April 10th, 1929, the International Olympic Committee made its unanimous decision. They chose Lake Placid. And they'd choose them again in 1980. Heartbreaking. Oh, but don't worry, the story gets worse. The Duluth Curling Club moved to the deck in 1976, leaving their grand old building vacant. They would suffer a fire in 1984. In 1939, the amphitheater was still going strong when its roof started collapsing from all the snow. And this happened during a game. Fortunately, it all happened slowly enough that all but four people escaped injury. Just a reminder here, again, Duluth doesn't have any more ski jumps. At least the Hotel Duluth is still here. It's Graceland Plaza now. And Duluth still has the snow and the ice and some hills. Those haven't gone anywhere. In 1936, the Winter Olympics permanently added downhill skiing as an event, thus ending the dream of Duluth ever hosting Winter Olympics. But maybe, and just hear me out before you dismiss the idea outright. Maybe we could host a World's Fair. Do they still do those? I think so. All right, a World's Fair. Coming this season on Minnesota Historia, the legend of St. Erho, superior shipwrecks, the Chief Buffalo Memorial Project, hunting for ancient agates, and the Root Beer Lady. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button so you won't miss future episodes. If you really like this video, become a member of WDSE and support projects just like this.